I want to show you a couple of problems that you might encounter when you are troubleshooting MPLS VPNs. Now, this is not by any means going to be an exhaustive list of all possible problems that can happen in the MPLS VPN scenario, but I'm just going to show you a couple of really, really dangerous ones. Now, I'm going to do basic troubleshooting things here, and just I, I want you to be able to see how those symptoms look, but keep in mind that you could have many different problems that at first glance look the same, but they have very, very different root causes. So the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to R2, and I'm going to do a very, very unusual thing. I'm just going to turn off Ceph. Now, another thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to R5 and I'm going to say clear IPBGP star all. So I want to clear all BGP sessions from R5. And from R2, I'm going to say clear MPLS LDP neighbor star. Now, the re the, the, there is a good reason why I'm doing this. Now, this is probably going to be the state in which you are going to, if this was a troubleshooting ticket, in which you are going to find your routers. So your troubleshooting task is going to say something along the lines of R7's loopback cannot ping R8's loopback, right? And your status on routers is going to be like this. So this is, this is the situation that you're most likely going to encounter your routers in. So you're going to go to R8 and you're going to say ping 10008 and of course you're not getting any responses. So the logical next step in this troubleshooting would be to do show IP route. Okay, I'm not seeing any routes other than connected routes. Okay, what is my PECE routing protocol? It's EIGRP. Show IP EIGRP interfaces. Do I have the neighbors? And here you can see that you actually do have the neighbor. So you have one neighbor. Okay, let's move on to R8. Is everything okay on this side? Which is the routing protocol? It's BGP. I should run show IP BGP summary. Okay, mental note, I'm receiving some prefixes here. Now, which are those prefixes? Show IP BGP. This is actually wrong, so give me just one sec. Clear IP BGP star. I shouldn't be actually receiving these. These were a little bit stale. So if I do show IP BGP summary here, oh wow. Okay, fair enough. Let's say that this is the state in which one, it should be really zero. I, I have no idea where six is getting these from. But anyways, on R8, let's say that I see these prefixes and I, I, I do show IP route VRFA. So oh, I just do show IP route. So I'm seeing these prefixes. So let's see on R5, what is the situation on R5? Here I would say show IP route VRFA. And in this VRF here, I'm getting that EIGRP prefix, but I'm not getting any prefixes from R6. Now, okay, I do apologize. Now, this is what I was waiting for, but I thought I actually cleared the session, but I cleared it only from, from R5. So now, this is the situation that you are actually going to encounter on R8. Show IPBGP summary, zero prefixes. Of course, you're not getting any prefixes, so now, we have checked what is happening on R7. We have checked what is happening on R8. Now, let's move on one step in towards the center of my network. Now, I'm going to check what's going on on R5 and what is going on on R6. Mind you, I've shown you what the root cause of the problem is. The root cause of the problem is Ceph on R2 being disabled. But you see how it manifests itself by routes not actually being in R7 and R8. That will become clear soon. So the next step that I'm going to do when I don't know what the problem is, I'm going to move in to R5. And I'm going to say here, show IP route VRFA. Here, I'm actually receiving the routes from R7. And then I'm going to go to R6 and I'm going to say show IP route VRFA. And here, I'm going to see that I actually received the route from R8. So I know now for a fact that this communication is okay and that this communication is okay. So I have problem somewhere between here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start troubleshooting that. So I'm now completely ignoring the presence of my CE devices here. 
The only thing that I'm looking at right now is the relationship between R5 and R6. So, show IP route. So, not VRF. I'm now focusing on the main routing table. Do I have the route for R6? I do. Can I ping it? I cannot ping it. If I cannot ping it, it's very unlikely that I actually have BGP session running. Show BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all summary. This confirms my suspicion. I do not have BGP session with R6. R5, I'm done with you. Going to R6, what's the status here? Show IP route. Do I actually have the route to R5? I do have the route for it. Can I ping it? I cannot ping it. Okay. Show BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all summary. Do I have the BGP session configured at all? I can see that I have the neighbor and I can see it's actually active. Okay. Is it configured properly? Maybe it's a wrong source interface, maybe it's something. Now is the time to actually take a look at the BGP config. So I'm still working with the assumption that there is something wrong with R5 and something wrong with R6. So taking a look at here, no BGP default IP for Unicast, okay, don't care about that. Remote AS update source, loopback zero, activate send community both, no passwords, nothing of the sorts configured. This looks okay. Mental note, redistribution is in place. Going to R6, show run section router BGP. What I'm expecting here to see is the update source, loopback, remote AS 56 that matches the other side. I'm using the correct neighbor, IPv4, it's activated there. Uh, should this matter? You know, maybe spend a couple of seconds here pondering. Shouldn't matter. VPN v4 activated, send community both, nothing special. Mental note, I can see the configuration between R6 and R8. As far as I'm concerned, R5 and R6 are properly configured. It is something else. So now I have to troubleshoot why R5 cannot communicate with R6. They are configured properly. So let's take a look. I'm going to say trace route 192.168.06 and it stops immediately. Okay, that's bad. Let's go to R4. Show IP route. I seem to have the route for R6, cannot ping it. Okay, R2, show IP route, I see R6, ping R6, I can ping it. So between R2 and R6, ping works. Between R4 and R6, ping doesn't work. Okay, it could be some access lists. So show, show run interface, serial 010, 206, no access lists, 204, no access list. So nothing is configured to filter the, tran the transit traffic. So now I'm getting a little bit paranoid. So show access list. Um, I'm going to say um, uh, inspect zone. Just to see if I have anything that filters the traffic. No. Okay. From R6, show IP route. Do I actually have the route to say R2? Ping 192.168.02. That works, 04 doesn't work. Okay, time to take a look at the labels. Show MPLS forwarding table on R5. What is the label that I'm using for R6's loopback? 402, going to R2, show MPLS forwarding. What is the label that I'm using for R6's loopback? It is 202, going to R2, show MPLS forwarding. Bam, I have nothing. This is the problem. Why don't I have anything in my MPLS forwarding table? Is MPLS running at all? Show MPLS LDP discovery. So this is what I'm going to look at. Show MPLS. Show MPLS LDP bindings. So I do have the control plane in place. I have the MPLS discovery running. I do have the labels in the binding database. I do, don't have them in the forwarding table. At this point, I want to explore what is happening with my forwarding table and I see what the root cause of my problem is. So now I know that IPSEF here is going to probably solve the problem. So I'm going to confirm that with show MPLS forwarding table. Now the forwarding table is populated. So on R5, if I go back to R5, I see the session coming up between 5 and 6. On R7, show IP route. I should be getting some routes right now. I am getting them. So if I go here and I ping between the loopbacks, I know that my configuration works. Save the configs on all the routers, maybe ping from the other side as well, and done. So this would be a troubleshooting approach that you would take 
here. But you see that, so I was obviously pretending, I obviously knew what the problem was. But you saw the steps that I have taken in troubleshooting this. So I started from the edges, right? I first tried to reproduce the problem. I was pinging from one side to the other side. Okay, that's not the case. Do I have the route here? Do I have the route here? Don't have the routes, so let's move on to the next step. I'm moving closer to where the problem is. Do I have the BGP? Do I have the routes? Do I have the routes? No. BGP session is down. I'm ignoring now the fact that this is MPLS VPN. Now I'm troubleshooting the reachability between R5 and R6 in the main routing table. So I was working on the assumption that there was something wrong with the IP traffic. I was going there and I saw that the route was there all over the place and I was narrowing down where the problem is and finally I narrowed it down to R2. So it was something on R2 and that kept me digging a little bit there. So you see how the problem with IP Ceph turned off. You saw how it manifests itself. Now the real manifestation, the real symptom that I should have picked up on and I was playing here down my capabilities a little bit. What I should have picked up on is the fact that on R2, the communication to and from R2 works, but that the transit traffic doesn't work. This was an immediate pointer that this was a Ceph problem, but I didn't want to jump on it. Right? I wanted to show you how you could, or how I could when I was, you know, when I knew a little bit less than I know now, now I can actually read much more into the symptoms. Having, you know, 80 plus boot camps does help with, 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 with that capability. So this is how I narrowed it down to Ceph. It was a process of elimination. I was checking the control plane and finally when I reached the forwarding plane, it didn't exist on R2. If the forwarding plane doesn't exist, what does the Ceph table say? Oh, there is no Ceph table. So this is how we actually pinpointed what the problem is. Now, let's take a look at another issue here. So I'm going to go to R6 now, and this is the loopback of R6. Now, this is running OSPF. So the main routing table here, R5, R4, R2, and R6, are running OSPF. Let's change the loopback address a little bit. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to change the loopback address to be actually slash 24. Now, if I go to R5, oops, if I go to R5, I can still ping loopback of R6, okay? If I do show IP route to SPF, this loopback is now still showing up as slash 32, right? If I go to R2, if I do show IP route to SPF, this loopback is still showing a slash 32. Why is it showing a slash 32? Because remember, by default, OSPF will advertise all loopbacks as slash 32s. Let's see if our ping now works. Oops, it obviously does. Let me uh, do one thing before we proceed. So clear MPLS LD, actually um, on R6. I just need to uh, to force LDP to uh, to actually uh, reset, and this is the fastest way to do it. Okay. So let's wait for things to uh, converge a little bit in order to. So I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds. So going to R7 now. Now I'm going to try to ping R8. So this is the scenario that I have right now. Okay. I'm now starting, and this is the state in which I'm very likely to find my devices if I start the troubleshooting section. So from R7, R7, I cannot ping R8. Show IP route. Do I have the routes? Yes, I do have the route. Okay, maybe R8 doesn't have the route back. Show IP route. So you see, I'm always going to be working from the edges. I don't know what the problem is, right? And here I see that I have the routes. You know what? At this point, I am pretty much sure that this is not a control plane problem because the routes are making it across. There is just one thing that I need to verify here. On R5, I'm going to say show IP route VRFA. I'm just going to make sure that this next hop here is actually reachable from the main routing table. If this is true, my control plane is very likely okay. So here, I'm going to say show IP route VRFA. So I'm looking for the next hop of this route and in the main routing table, I'm trying to ping it. It works. 
So this tells me that my MPLS VPN control plane is OK. Now, this doesn't mean anything for the MPLS control plane. So I'm talking about MPLS VPN control plane is very likely OK. Why? Because the, my PECE routers, my PECE routing protocol worked, and my PE routers actually exchanged these routes, and those routes ended up on CEs. So that's done. That actually works. What doesn't work is getting the traffic from A to B. So now, this is clearly a data plane problem. Well, at least I think so. So let's take a look at what is happening. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do the trace route. Let's see where the problem stops. Now, take a note. This is the wrong thing to do. So I'm going to do the trace route to R8. And it tells me that it stops on 5. Now, this is the reason why I'm telling you this is the wrong thing to do. right? So this is now not me, the troubleshooter, talking. This is me, the CCI instructor, talking. You can see here how Traceroute is lying to us. Now, we know exactly where the problem is. The problem is on R6 or maybe on R2. But Traceroute, if I use the IP troubleshooting tool, to troubleshoot this problem is actually going to show me that the problem exists in the wrong place. So don't use this for troubleshooting MPLS VPNs. Follow the labels. So what we need to do here is we need to figure out what is the label that is actually, so show IP route VRFA, what is the actual label that is going to be used to forward this traffic? Now, if I do show MPLS forwarding table, I am not going to see this label here. The reason why I'm not going to see this label here is because this is not LDP-derived label. This is the label that is learned from MPBGP. So if I do show BGP VPN v4 unicast all, or actually say unicast VRFA, I'm missing number four here. So this is going to be the label that is going to be used. So this is the VPN label. But I also need the transport label. So what will be the actual transport label that gets used for this? Well, if I do show IPSEF VRFA, I will see the transport label in use. So this is the label stack. So this will, be the v, this will be the VPN label, and this will be the label that gets used. So what I need to do here, identify in this output here, what is going to be this label. So this is label 402, and I can see that it is the label used for the next hop. So now I need to follow this label across. So I'm going to go to R4, show MPLS forwarding table. And if I take a look at label 402, it tells me use label 202. That's very good. So if I go to label 202, show MPLS forwarding table, label 202 means send traffic to R6 with no label. Well, that's OK, because this is PHP, right? Well, no. This is not PHP. This no label means destroy the label. That means no matter which labels were actually on the label stack, do not send them labeled. That means that this label here, 608, the one that we saw here in the label stack, the packet that R2 sends, sorry, that R4 sends to R2, will contain the label 202 followed by 608. But when R2 is supposed to send traffic to R6, it's supposed to send it labeled with 608. But no, it won't do that. It will actually remove that label 608. Well, this is the problem. Now, why is this a problem? Well, let's take a look. Do we actually have the label in our label database, in our lib? So if I do show MPLS LDP bindings, what I'm looking for here is 192.168.0.6. Now, let's take a look. I do have the label locally assigned 202, and we know for a fact that R4 is using this. And then I have the remote binding from R4. But where is the binding from R6? Well, here it is. R6, actually, in its routing table, 
So if we take a look at this, show IP route. In its routing table, actually has slash 24 route. It doesn't have slash 32 route that everyone else has. It has the loopback that is configured with slash 24. Now, mind you, it's OSPF that advertises this route as slash 32. So R2 here receives the label locally assigned by R6 for slash 24, but R2 doesn't have this route in the routing table, but it does, it does have slash 32 from R6, but it doesn't have R6's label for it, because R6 never assigned the label for slash 32, because it doesn't know about the existence of this route. Because you see, LDP looks at the routing table, not at OSPF database, it looks at routing table. So there is now discrepancy between our IP routing and our MPLS database. And this is why R2 is sending unlabeled packets to R6. Now, if I did just a trace route from R5, I would see the exact same output that I had before. No differences in output. Because in IP traffic, in regular IP traffic, we cannot see this. Because when R2 needs to send an unlabeled packet to R6, R2 has the route for it. But it cannot send the labeled packet. So our MPLS traffic is what suffers, not the regular IP traffic. How do we fix this problem? Well, we fix this problem by, make, by making sure that OSPF actually advertises the correct mask on the route. So now, when I do show MPLS LDP bindings, now I will see that for this slash 24 network, I actually do have the binding from R6. So now, this is in place. I also see that I have the local binding. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong network. I do apologize. Where is it? Um, it's... Um, <laughs> Just one second. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Zero. Oh, of course it's going to be at the top. Sorry. So now I see that from R6, I actually have the binding. Now I have the local binding for this slash 24 as well. So if I go and take a look at my MPLS forwarding table, now I see that for this network here, we are using the correct uh, label. And on R2 as well, show MPLS forwarding table. Where is it? Zero, zero. Now take a look at this. It's no longer delete label. It is pop label. So now when I go to R7 and when I actually do the trace route, now it works. Or if I do ping, now it works as well. There is one thing that I want to show you about this. So if I did show MPLS LDP discovery, now we are going to get this message here on our neighbor statements. Now, I would really like to meet that person who thought that this was a good idea, to put this in the output. Because this here indicates that, oh my god, there is a problem. Actually, no. This means, oh my god, this is good, because now it works. Because before, when we actually had the host route, there was no indication of a problem. Let me show you that. So here, if I remove no IP OSPF network point to point, when that route actually gets advertised, so let me say show IP route OSPF. Let's wait for, there we go. Now, there is no indication of the problem, and now we actually do have a problem. But now, when I actually correct the issue, so let's wait for that to be advertised. Now, when, it, when it's going to say that uh, there is no host route, now actually everything works. So I would really, really like to meet this person who put this in iOS and ask him what exactly were they thinking. Now, there is a situation when not having a host route is actually a dangerous situation, but I mean, there shouldn't be warning like this in this case. It, it shouldn't really, really be there.